Hey everyone, uh, we got a special episode this one, but I wanted to give make two points before I get started. Uh, one, big thanks to the guys at Ned. Go to helloned.com, use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C at checkout, uh, get 15% off the best, the only CBD oil I use. It's full spectrum hemp oil, it's not just shitty CBD. These guys grow the plants with love. Go listen to the episode I did with them. It's, they're just great people. CBD is a nebulous, weird, shady ass field. Um, these people are legit. You know, when you find them, you stick with them. They're also just, they're trying to run like an ethical, community focused business. That's fucking amazing. So go support those guys. Again, it's helloned.com. Use the code SYNC, S Y N C, at checkout. You get 15% off. Uh, these guys are great. Let's support them as much as possible. Um, and then the second thing is rate and review this podcast. Also, uh, If this helps you, this episode, share it with someone you love. I never have said that about a podcast before, but I truly believe in the power of what this episode is. I've seen it work. It's fucking nuts. That's all I can say. Um, So stick with it. Do it. Happy imagining. And yeah, I'll see you next week with a regular episode. (laughs) All right, guys. Bye-bye. This is synchronicity. 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 Welcome to synchronicity. This is it. This is the episode you've been waiting for. You might not even know you've been waiting for it, but this is the episode. Uh, solo cast, no guest today. That'd be a, <laughs> be a really nice way to introduce a guest, though. I should do that. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is going over an imaginal technique, actually two techniques, um, that have radically changed my life in a very short period of time. I am only speaking from direct experience. Uh You know, sometimes you speculate, you conceptualize, you offer things that you don't have direct experience in, and that's okay. It's probing, it's feeling, it's searching, it's being curious, and that's great. But when you find something and you have direct experience with it and it's validated over and over and over again, that's time, I think, to share something. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Also, a lot of people have been asking me about this. Um, I was on another great podcast it will be linked to. Uh, in this, and you can get even another overview of what I'm going to go over in a slightly different way if you want to hear me interviewed about it. Um, But uh, a lot of people have asked me how to do this, and I feel like this is an easier thing for me to do and a more effective one is to point people directly to this episode and say, hey, listen to that, and then tell me what you think, and then we can talk about it. So this episode is really about imagination in full Um, here's the concept. I'm going to give you the premise and then a technique. And if anyone has any questions about this, um, this will probably work for a little bit. And then I think there'll be too many emails, but write it Noah at syncpodcast.com. That's S Y N C podcast.com. And I'll do my best to get back to you very quickly because I realize there could be a lot of questions about this. Um, so this specific technique and premise. So here's the premise. All right. Also, I'm going to point this out, and I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. But if you do what I am going to give you as a technique to do, um, it's going to change your world because it it will work um, if you do it earnestly and honestly, and it's going to change the way your reality works forever. So that's, I say that not as a teaser, as a cliffhanger, as something to pique people's interest. I say it as a genuine precautionary warning that if your life is comfortable and you like the way it is and you're just maybe poking around for some things, this might not be the technique for you. But if you are genuinely rather, you you want to use the matrix analogy, you're about to take, what is it, the red pill, whatever the one where he escapes the matrix. That's kind of what this is like. I know this is like super hard sell too. It's crazy. I'm totally hyping this up as my friend who I told this uh, to earlier today um, on a phone call. All right, I'm doing like 20 of these phone calls. Let's do it a little less. How about that? Anyway, here's the technique. Uh, The first thing you're going to have to do, and I'll preface this by saying this took me 35 years, almost 36 years, really, 
uh, to do, to figure out. Never did this before consciously, never thought about it enough to actually truly put it into action. I think I've unconsciously done it. I think we all do. Um, the first, oh, I didn't even give you the premise. Look at this. This is like a classic way to do this. And uh, we'll be weeding out people along the way who just think I'm a loon. So if you're still tuned in and you think this is good, congratulations. Um, so here's the premise. Imagination, your imagination, your wonderful human imagination creates reality as we know it. It precedes reality as we know it. Waking life, this world that we're in, this three-dimensional world and the one dimension of time moving backwards to forward, not from the back forwards. It's always moving forward, right? Time. Uh, our imagination creates that. It creates it in advance of what we experience in this world. And that's like, okay, cool. What are we going to do with that, buddy? Not particularly helpful. Um, the key is, is that if you recognize that as a reality, there's a technique you can try to see if you can actually imagine things into this world and into reality. And then if that starts to happen, how do you solidify that that's the operative principle of play? Not that you, you know, precognitively intuited that something was going to happen or this was just a set of circumstances that were going to happen anyway. How do you make sure you know that this was an imaginal act made manifest? You selected a reality, a version of it that you wanted to live in. So here is what you do to test this out. Don't take my word for this. Don't take anyone's word for anything related to your own consciousness and awareness and mind. That I can't say that more clearly. You can like people. They may have techniques and modalities and cool things and really just be genuinely awesome people, but you got to do it yourself. So you need the direct experience if you're going to believe this and that. I'm giving you a technique where hopefully you can build that direct experience. And if you do it, you will. I know that. My hit rate so far is 100%. I'll let you know if and when it dips. I don't think so. Um, so here's what you do. You figure out something that you truly desire, that you want a deepest possible wish that you long for. And this may take you a little bit or it may not take you long at all. You may know exactly what you want. Great. You're way faster at it than me. It took me way longer to do it. Um, but it's something worth thinking about. Even if you're not going to do this technique, this is just a great thing to do. Um, but find that thing can be multiple things. You can even start with a small thing that, you know, you want, but it's not like the core essence of your being and fulfillment. But I recommend that as well. Uh, but find something you really want. Anything it can be material, can be immaterial, can be uh, a relationship, it can be an encounter, it can be finan financial success, it can be anything you want. Your imagination is the limit of what this can be. Um, and you're going to pick this thing and you do this at any point. Just think about it. This is just a good thing to do in general. And then what you're going to be going for is essentially a, you're going to go into a drowsy state bordering on sleep, right? So a really good time to do this is when you're going to sleep at night. So a thing we do every day for the most part. And another good time to do it is if you're just waking up in the morning. But I find the benefit of doing it right before you go to sleep is that you do this technique correctly, it shifts it into your unconscious. And then that allows this to really work its magic because your conscious mind, your rational mind, your analytical mind is not going to like what I'm telling you. It's not going to like, it's going to be like, this is cockamamie. It don't make sense. Does not compute. And that's fair. And that's valid because pretty much this is not how our world works when we're awake. We have natural laws. We have things. The idea that consciousness or imagination creates reality and then we can have some influence over it. Oh, man, that's uh, that's really weird. So there is going to be a lot of obstacles potentially to you grokking this concept, fully integrating it. But here's the technique because you can test it. And that's the beautiful thing. You can empirically test this. So once you have that thing that you want, you desire, your wish, what you're going to do is you're going to imagine a scene and you're, you're on the sleep. Let's say it's nighttime. You can also do this not at nighttime. You can just enter this state. And here's another cool thing. You don't have to be like stone cold sober and in like some holy state of mind do this. This is not predicated on you meditating and going to a Vipassana retreat for 30 days and clearing your mind and purifying your soul and only eating vegan. You can do that. Those are wonderful things to do, but it is not predicated on this. You could smoke some weed. 
You could drink a little alcohol. You can do things that get you into this state reliably, and this is what you're going to do when you're there. In your imagination, we all have one, you're going to create a scene, a short, compact scene that you fill with sensory detail, but the scene, the important thing about it is it's going to imply that the thing you want, the desire, the wish, has already been achieved. So it's going to come after this has been achieved. So for instance, let's say you want a job, right? You're, or you're at a job and you want a promotion. That's what you really want. I don't know how many people that's going to be, but it could be. What you would imagine is you shake hands with someone and they say, congratulations on the new job. And you go, yeah. And you load this scene up in your imagination, which with at least as much detail as this world has. Try to get as close as possible to waking life as possible. If you can exceed it, bonus points. Okay, do that. And then the next thing you're going to do is load this scene up with an emotion, a powerful, I recommend loving emotion or feeling sentiment, and you're just going to charge it in. And here's where the secret is, is that I've found for myself. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. Um, and I'll address about how this, people have asked me how this relates to the secret, the book. I don't, I don't know. I didn't read it, but someone brought up a good point. I'll bring up after this. Um, if you've read it, it's different in a key way. Uh, so once you have the scene, but this is the real juice of it. When you load it up with this feeling, if you also load into the scene that you imagine this thing into existence. So let's say you imagine that you were going to get a promotion. You will use stick with this example. There's the handshake. You're also going to imagine how you would feel in that situation and also with the knowledge that you imagine this into existence. And that's a pretty awe-inspiring emotion and feeling. Uh, it's like a miraculous occurrence that you've entered this dream, this waking dream we call life. So if you do that, it seems to have kind of like a turbo boost effect is the only way I can describe it. It really is a nice little thing you can employ. Um, so you're going to, okay, let's recap, right? You know the thing you want. You're going to be in a drowsy like sleep. Hopefully, you know, a good time to do it is when you're going to sleep at night. Then you are going to load it with sensory detail, vividness, all five senses if you can, but I mean, you might not be smelling or tasting in some of these scenes. People's faces is a good thing. A very short and compact scene, right? Very short, not too long, not too much detail because then your mind will wander and you'll start going into all these different scenarios as we normally do. Um, it can get distracting. If a scene also is too difficult for you to imagine, you can just do a phrase like, oh, th you know, like this is so amazing. And then you have linked that with some imaginal scene. You'll see they play together in a lot of ways. So you can pick a short three, four, five word phrase, and that also works. Um, but this is what you're going to do after you load it with sensory vividness and that emotional feeling. You're going to do nothing else. And I don't mean that in a passive way is you're going to go to sleep. Hopefully it gets shifted into your unconscious. But even if you don't and you wake up, you're not going to take any specific or extra steps to make that thing happen. So pick something where you don't have to do something. Now, here's an example. Let's say you want to be a successful you know, musician, an artist, and producer, whatever it is. Uh, you don't stop making music. you know. And if you want to be a famous singer and you've never taken a day of singing in your life, that's probably going to be pretty hard for you to fully believe and imagine. You can still try to do it and circumstances may arise. This is just saying, start with something that you really think is going to be possible if this is an active principle. Then you can expand to other aspects if you prove that it's a real thing. But when you imagine this thing, don't take any real world steps that will kind of help you get there. And the reason you don't want to do that is because if when this thing happens, it will happen if you do this, I promise you. And you'll be able to feel your way into it at first and then maybe question it a few times. But once it happens like four or five times, it's like, okay. <laughs> All right, I guess this is how it works. Um, but you don't want to go back if you took these little extra steps and say, oh, well, it would have happened anyway. It happened because I did X or Y or Z and that led to this. Um, don't do that because that is going to let your rational mind, your analytical mind come in and say, oh, well, this is why it happened. Of course, this nonsense about imagination creating reality doesn't make any sense at all. So that's important. So that's the technique. Now, this is what will happen um, when you do this, for real. I'm not making this up. You, some crazy set of circumstances, first of all, synchronicities and things like that, stuff we like to talk about on, on the show, high weirdness, will just start multiplying like crazy. I mean, it's I know this from running a show called Synchronicity 
it's just a phenomena. You talk about synchronicity, you do things like this, you alter reality, you alter your consciousness. Um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and I will give specific examples in the coming weeks, you know, in episodes and of, of things I've used it for. Some of them are still actively going and pretty fucking nuts. Um, and we'll probably continue to go based on what's going on. And I, I think that will help you, but I don't want to lure people in with promises of what's happened to me. I want you to try this for yourself and see if it works for you. But what will happen is, is a crazy set of circumstances will materialize in this world and that thing and that scene you imagine, you will walk into it. Now, this is an important um, point. Don't settle for a halfway picture of what you imagined. Don't settle for that. What you imagined, that wish and that thing you imagined that implied something has already happened, that specific scene, I mean, you can be like a shade or two off. But if it's substantially different and it's not totally right, keep going. Don't settle because then you're going to basically start putting the responsibility outside of yourself, which is not what this is. And we'll get into the metaphysical concepts and how this works and you know why this is an operative principle and what it really means. Um, maybe in this episode, maybe in another one, maybe in the next one. Um, but here's another technique you can use. So this is based off of the idea that we experience time one dimensionally and that's it, right? It moves forward from the back, passes in the past, but now we can go in our heads and minds and all this cool stuff. And that's kind of where the secret is to here that we can use this little technique. But my general impression from psychedelics and some extended periods of synchronicity is that time really is kind of like this nexus point where all things exist and emerge from and our particular senses filtered into this experience so we can function in this world and it's great for that reason um and no one is going to deny that time doesn't move backwards to forwards um but i also think it moves in a lot of different ways and we can access different states of consciousness and have powerful impacts on our health our bodies our emotional states psychological states by using this kind of quantum property of time. So here's what you do. Let's say you've had a traumatic experience in the past or something you didn't handle well or just something that went terribly wrong or even a piece of bad news. You can do the same exact technique that I just recommended, but rewrite the scene. Now, what's not gonna happen is, is let's say you got in a huge fight with someone and you do this technique, you know, they're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna go to your friend or whoever it was, family member and say, hey, like, Remember, we had that fight in the like, What are you talking about? We never have a fight. That's not what I'm saying. But if you rewrite this traumatic situation, you will also you will internally start to see your state shift going forward. And you will also receive external validation that there's been some real healing and integration of these traumatic experiences and how they you would have liked them to go or known they should have gone if you handled it better or the other person did. That's really powerful because a lot of times what holds us back the most are the things that have happened to us that we believe to be true, right? The general principle with all of this stuff is that we move through states of consciousness and that if we get stuck in one where we feel that we're a certain way, it can be really hard to get out of it. And if you think about things like depression and anxiety and even mental illness, you know, which is a broad spectrum, people get stuck in these states that are out of sync with what we call normal reality and culture where they feel some particular thing and really don't know how to get out. And there are a lot of different ways that people use to get out in a lot of different modalities from, you know, plant medicine to allotropic drugs in the psychiatric profession to sound healing to acupuncture. I mean, yoga, you name it, kirtan, there's almost endless amounts of ways that we can try to heal ourselves. And all of them are valid, right? But this is something that I have found is incredibly valid because this is what is going on in this reality. The truth is, as I experience it, is that people are doing this, including myself, and have been doing it whether they know it or not. If you know that it's going on, you can exercise some degree of control. And I want to make one broader point that I was talking to with my mom uh, about today. <clears throat> you know, she really is a fan of Vipassana meditation and mindfulness in general and meta loving kindness and those are great practices but i think a lot of the buddhist teachings in the west and a lot of the vedic teachings that have come from the east have been really misrepresented in the western culture and i think we see this very clearly um, happening in a lot of these organized kind of you know, organizations like shambhala and where there's some very good people but a lot of these me too situations which you heard about 
uh, with Juliana not too long ago, Juliana McCarthy. There's some fucked up shit going on. Um, and we're seeing kind of this, you know, it's not the perfect solution to everything, like most things in life. Um, but the root of what I'm talking about is that I think when it relates to desire, this idea of no attachment, this idea of grasping and aversion, our Western minds just didn't process it right or it was a mistranslation. The idea, and I spoke about this with Duncan in that episode um, that we recently did, this idea that all desires are not to be enjoyed or pursued is, in my direct experience, incorrect. And I bet in yours too, if you think about a certain situation when you fall in love, when you hold your child for the first time or your children, when you have just an amazing dinner or watch an amazing movie or listen to an amazing song, you are fulfilled. That is a wonderful, energizing, fulfilling thing. And Buddhists and other people may say there is a karmic price to pay for that on the opposite side. And that very well may be true, but it is not always true. And I think to deny that aspect of ourselves and not investigate desires creates a lot of repression, creates a lot of psychic tension. And those things can really hold people back from being the people they need to be and were born to be and want to be and yearn to be. So this principle allows us to kind of at least investigate desires, especially um, if they're in, you know, an ethical framework. That's, this is an important aspect of this too. This What I'm talking about here is what Neville Goddard would refer to as the law. And he taught two things, the law and the promise. The law basically is a neutral principle. Like, look around in the world, you can see that things aren't great for everyone all the time. And this is where we start bumping into kind of this idea of changing your reality and then looking at radical social injustices, you know, for with people of color and immigrants and all of these things. And people can tune out and say, oh, well, yeah, great. Imagine these wonderful things for yourself, white dude, white, straight white dude. It's easy for you. Of course, this shit manifests. What I'm saying is this is the only way we move into a reality where we actually start combating those things, which my premise is they originate in our psyches and unconscious. And that's why these things are created is by taking responsibility for our own world, our own thoughts, noticing our reactivities. This is not wildly different than what a lot of people teach in the new age and spiritual scenes. But the truth is, is that if you see that this is an operative principle, that imagination creates reality, the responsibility is then 100% with you to change yours. And that doesn't mean you have to change all of your actions, but if you know you should be a better person and you can do something about it, you should. It's that simple. But Pursuing desires is also something that will teach you a lot about yourself, a lot about the people around you, and is generally what I would refer to as the left-hand path, right? This is the path where you go deep into the world. It is a precarious path. It's one that should be walked. It's kind of like a razor's edge, but it is a valid way of approaching reality. So that's kind of what we're delving into. This is the law, and it's a neutral principle. This can be used for not cool things. So in terms of an ethical guideline, I think, well, not I think, what I use is the golden rule and know thyself. Be clear about what you would want done to you, what you wouldn't want be done to you, and don't do that to other people intentionally, right? Don't create a situation that's going to cause harm intentionally, right? That is not a good thing to do if you wouldn't want it done to yourself. You carry those things around as your kind of tools and magical wands and scepters and rods, and you're good to go. Like, the world is your oyster now. Um, do the things that help us kind of collectively move into a better world. That's an important thing, and that's an important aspect about this. At first, you probably play around with this thing, figure out what it's going to do for your life. A lot of people I know will probably use this to stabilize their financial situation so they can start being creative and figuring out what else they would want out of life, what they want in life. Um, and then from there, like, we got to move this shit into a better collective vision for what's going on, right? The premise is that stable, imaginal acts create our reality, meaning that the more people believe that we can move into a positive future and work on ourselves, the more that will be manifest out in the world. It seems crazy. It seems like the best thing to do when there's a radical injustice is to get mad, scream about it, and upset. There's not that there's not validity to it, and we should be shining light on bad situations but if you can change yourself first and use this as an operative principle you will be way more skilled and powerful for affecting change out in the world in a variety of ways so 
this is real. This is how it works. My premonitions 20 years ago, it wasn't quite, it was 2003 and four, was that this is where reality and consciousness was moving to on a linear timeline. I think more people are seeing this. Our reality seems to get weirder and weirder just objectively. Um, we know that the interweaving of conscious minds from the internet and things like that is going to have an impact on the world, right? It's going to be, uh, <laughs> there's going to be shit going on. And I think we're seeing this now. We are moving out of an industrial age into some post, you know, modern, weird, surreal painting. And with this technique, with these techniques, um, I think we can do some pretty amazing stuff for the betterment of ourselves and the world. So again, if anyone has any questions, you can email me, noah at syncpodcast.com. I'll get back to you. I will earnestly uh, do this for anyone who has any questions about this because I understand it's a kind of a trippy concept. Another thing I like to do, another thing I didn't point out, the world will deny the reality of what you imagine instantly, right? I mean, if you imagine a lot of money, it's not going to just materialize in front of your eyes when you open them. So you have to be very clear on reminding yourself that your imagination precedes what we experience here. That doesn't mean just be patient forever, although patience is a good virtue. Um, it means that you want to basically take it seriously that this is, that's how it works. So a little mantra I like to tell myself if doubt or anything else is creeping in is I say this out loud in this world. I say, this is the dream for to waking life. And my imagination is reality. And then you just start doing that. You'll start believing it and you'll start seeing what happens. You will move into a world where this is an operative principle. It always has been. It always will be. A lot of people experience this as intuition. They've done this for themselves intentionally and unintentionally. If you know it exists, you essentially break the enchantment, you lift the veil a little bit, you see a clearer vision of reality, and what will probably happen even before if you're mani you know, not manifesting, selecting a future where things appear different that you want, your state of consciousness will change as well. So you want to live from the thing you're imagining, not of it. You don't want to think of it. And it's very important to do this from within your own perspective, right? When you're doing that imaginal technique, you see this? I left it at the end. People are gonna go and do this technique and here's another little secret. It's very important. If you listen this far, congratulations. The secret is this. When you're imagining this scene, you don't watch it like a movie, right? You don't look at it like a movie. You do it from within your own body. If you look at it like a movie, it's not the same. I don't know why. I think it's because it has to do with this being our concept or our conception of self. So if you're here towards the end, this wasn't a very long talk, but 26 minutes in, something like that, um, that's another really important thing. So let's do the recap at the end of the technique, right? And then the next episode, we'll go over one other one. Here's the technique. Find something you truly desire, wish, right? When you enter a drowsy, hypnagogic-like state, bordering on sleep, create an imaginal scene that implies the wish is fulfilled, the desire is fulfilled. This would take place after the thing you wish has happened. Load that scene with sensory detail as much as possible. Then load it with an emotion, a loving emotion that you would actually feel in that situation. Double that by knowing that you imagined it in. So imagine yourself knowing that you imagined this into existence. Then go to sleep. Feel it until you know. Sometimes it'll happen. You'll just know. You'll be like, oh shit, I just did it. Then do your best to take no additional steps to make the thing happen and recognize that your senses, your five senses, the world, is going to deny this thing as being true, but carry it with you like you'd be carrying a child and eventually it'll be birthed into the world without fail. I can tell you this works for anything. Um, it's insane. It really, I've studied a lot of stuff. I've had a lot of experiences, transcendent, mystical. This is the first operative technique that has been shown to me that really, really, really works. So try it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Um, at all. Again, if you have any questions, noah at syncpodcast.com. Um, I also am offering on the site in the menu, if you want me to imagine something for you, 
right? If you have something, you can be specific or not specific. I'm happy to do that. It doesn't take me a long time. Um, and we can see if that happens. If it happens, great. You can share the experience. We can have a cool podcast about it. Um, that's it for this week. I think, like I said, I'll do another one of these with the last um, technique that I know about. There's, a, again, a lot of other metaphysical components of this. Um, you know, <laughs> you may have a lot of questions like how do dead people fit in? What about aliens? Like what happens after death? Does this invalidate other religious beliefs and doctrines? Short answer is no um, about it invalidating things. But again, I, a stable imaginal beliefs create reality. So that's a there's a high degree of malleability for that. I will say one final thing. This can get a little scary. It can get liberating, it can feel free, but it can also be terrifying, right? If you're in this kind of limbo state. Um, what you really want to do when you're here is just recognize that it's okay. This is a, a very powerful kind of mind shift that you can go through, but it's a, it's a very good thing at the end of the day, and it changes just how everything works in the world. So don't forget that. Uh, don't forget that you should have fun, bring love with you. Uh, just try to make the world a better place, truthfully. Envision a better you that will make the world a better place. Um, that's it. I'll see you next week on a more regular episode. But until then, it's going to be a totally different week by the time next time you hear my voice. I know that. So I'll see you next week in another reality. Bye-bye. we